morning. Mum has just opened up the valve on the water butt drippy system in here, which seems to be working brilliant. I would say all these tomatoes, even though it's been really, really hot, look absolutely fine. Don't they, Lil? They're looking good. They need a serious tidy, though. What's that? They're back in, well, one, two, Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, that one's quite tiny, isn't it? Yeah, there must be the two new girls. Yeah. This is the... Hey! Productive girlies! Huh? Productive girlies! Morning, chaps. It is such a beautiful morning up here this morning because all last night, starting about midnight until like quite late into this morning, it was just chucking it down. We had proper, like solid, heavy rain. And it was the last couple of days. I will obviously, if you watch last vlog, you will have seen me just like, <sighs> too hot, basically. But the temperature has really cooled down. It's about 22, 23 all week this week. And uh, we've got a couple of bits of rain so last night was the big dump and then there's a few bits more forecast in the week so i think it's going to be a fantastic week and you can just feel that the plants and the, the soil and everything is just like ah, oh, <sighs> which is how i feel it's absolutely brilliant so anyway this vlog is going to be the first vlog of july it's currently the 29th of june but we're rapidly approaching july and uh, yeah so june is one of those months where you plant out so much stuff it's like the May, June massive rush, but there's still loads to sow in July. Mid to late August, September is when you start sowing stuff, which is gonna be your things to overwinter and then be your really early spring crops. But now is the time that you've got to sow things to keep you going all the way through the autumn and into the winter. And it can be a bit of a tricky one because you're still like coming off the high of June's mad plant out. And then July, you start going into the huge harvest season. And it's just remembering to We've been up here five minutes and we've got a chicken escape. What are you doing out? What are you doing out? Come on. Here we go. What are you doing out? There's nothing in it. Look, it's empty. It's empty. What are you doing? Yes. escape neutralized that's rube she's got really really good at that she just uh, but luckily with ruby like she's perfectly happy to be thrown back in again there's no drama when florence gets out not so easy anyway we are talking july seed now we've got over the hump in the year so we've gone past the solstice tis the season for mustard greens and oriental veg now mustard greens might not sound exciting <laughs> Um, but if you haven't grown them and haven't tried them, they are absolutely delicious and I grow two varieties every year. That is uh, Green Wave and Dragon's Tongue. Now, I first bought these off real seed, as you can see with the beautiful seed packets. They are a leafy vegetable. Um, yes, they do have a slightly mustard taste, particularly if you eat them raw, but cooked in a stir fry they are so good and also they give you really good leafy greens throughout the winter so i'm going to sow some now which i'll be picking in autumn late autumn i'm going to sow some more in august and some more in september and the ones that i'm sowing in september will tide me over the winter so then i'll be picking them in the spring now the dragon's tongue is that dragon's tongue dragon's tongue is a softer one i'd say than the green wave so like i wouldn't probably grow the dragon's tongue over winter unless I was growing it in the polytunnel whereas the green wave is so strong I actually only recently pulled this out I don't know if you remember it was in the top bed uh, it had gone to seed but even when it's gone to seed you can still eat the flower spikes and you can still eat the leaves they stay really quite tender and yes yeah, so it would have been April that I pulled that out just a really really strong plant it's absolutely delicious like I say, really spicy, mustardy when raw, but when cooked, it's just like a really, really good tasting. Has a bit of a brassica -y kind of taste to it. It's really delicious. So yeah, I'm gonna be getting those in. Another thing, which is when you get past the midsummer, 
pak choy is going in. I got some in last week and I'll be putting some more in. I grow two varieties of this as well, which is also a green and a red one. The green one I normally grow is called joy choy. <laughs> Um, but this year I just got a free packet, so I'm going to be sewing some of them. It's just a plain green one. Joy Choi, the green one, I've always found to be really, really reliable. So I might actually pick up some more of that because this is, there's not a great deal of seed in there. But this one is just originally called Free Seed Pat Choi. <laughs> so I don't know what variety it is, but I'm going to be getting those in. But yeah, Joy Choi normally, but it is the red one, which is so beautiful. And that one also originally named Red Choi. <laughs> but it is a beautiful you can see it's not really red it's like petrol purple if i can find some footage of me picking some last year i'll put it in because it is a stunner i'm also going to be doing tatsoi which is very very similar to a pak choy and this one chijimisai which i tried last year and was really really delicious uh, it's like a it's a taller stronger stemmed sort of oriental vegetable but this time of year you can do them all the chinese cabbage is a big one for this time of year i'm not going to be growing any chinese cabbage because firstly i've had no success with it you have to kind of bundle them up really quite tightly and they tend to rot out for me and also they are so cheap to buy and taste fantastic whereas i find that the pak choy is really worth growing and so are some of the slightly more unusual ones I am also going to be doing something quite exciting this year, which I don't have the seed to show you because I've only just ordered it, but it is called Chinese celery and it's a short season celery. So it looks a bit like a very skinny stemmed celery. It doesn't form that big clump and it doesn't stay in the ground as long as celery, but it has a very strong celery taste. So yeah, Chinese celery is the other one that I'm going to have on that list. It's also an excellent time for the chicory ondi family. So I grow two leaf chicories. I grow a red stemmed one and a green stemmed one that look like a huge giant dandelion. Uh, they are absolutely delicious. My ones from last year are currently flowering, looking beautiful. So you can uh, just leave them in afterwards because if you keep chopping them down, they do regrow and you can just keep using them. But they're a really fantastic vegetable for autumn and early spring. And then after you've finished eating all that you can of them, you can just let them go to flower and they are stunning. Proper like periwinkle blue. There's also the tighter type of chicory. So you've got this type, which is the long skinny ones as a radicchio, or you've got the really tight ball ones, both absolutely delicious. And the other one in the same family that I grow is this one, which is gold heart. Uh, which is a frizzy type chicory very much eaten more like a lettuce like i, I wouldn't cook this one uh, it's kind of in three stages so the um the leaf chicory the one that looks like a dandelion i definitely cook it because it turns your face inside out with bitterness if you don't cook it and though it's delicious <laughs> and then you've got these ones which you can eat either cooked or raw and then this one which i would always eat raw but yeah chicory's a go at the moment sounds like a silly bit of advice but remember to sew things that you actually want to eat <laughs> It's like a lot of people really can't stand chicory. I happen to love it and mum loves it. But uh, just because you can sew them, I mean, there's gonna be a lot of things on this list, which I'm gonna say, you can sew this now, but I'm not sewing it because either I don't like to grow it, I've had no success with it, or I don't actually like it. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a key one to remember. Unless obviously it's something you've never tried before, in which case it's definitely worth a go. But yeah, like a lot of people can't stand chicory. Don't sew it if you don't like it. Okay, on to another thing that a lot of people grow, but quite a lot of people don't like actually eating, uh, but I am not in that camp, is chard. Now, you know, I love chard. I absolutely love it. And I sowed some really early in the year, and that one is actually gonna be planted out later today. So I'm gonna get those in. They're a really good size. I've actually kept them in pots a lot longer than I would normally, but I was possibly going to have to use them for something else, which was a different project. But now that's not going to happen. I'm gonna be getting them in the ground. I've got to sow another lot now, which will also be an outside one. And then probably mid to the end of August, I'll sow again, and they'll be the ones which then grow away in the poly tunnel over winter and then be my really early crop in the spring. But you know I love to talk about chard and the varieties that I'm growing are the same ones that I sowed earlier in the year. So the peppermint chard, which is a true stunner of a plant. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Even when it's this young, it's just a beautiful, beautiful color. I am also growing Lucullus, which is quite a different style of chard. It's a very, very lime green, very, very soft. And when you cook it down, it cooks down almost like a spinach. It's so tender. Once again, like earlier in the year, I'm not doing Ford Hook Giant. I'm doing White Silver, which is another white stemmed one. It's not quite as massive as Ford Hook Giant does the same job and I'm also doing a green stemmed one which is sometimes called perpetual spinach 
um, which is just a green thin stemmed chard um, with a bietta from Frankie Seeds. So that is my chard selection. Now is like the tail end of where I would sow chard for growing outside and picking and eating this year. Obviously you can sow it later on if you're just gonna use it as baby leaf for salad. I never really do that. I'm more of a, I like a whopping great leaf kind of chard girl. And so yeah, this is my last sowing for outdoors. You can direct sow this or you can sow it inside um, either or the ground is warm enough outside now to sow most of these things direct. Add turnips and spinach to the list. The three turnips that I'm sowing are Purple Top Milan Classic, you know, flat disc shaped turnip, really, really delicious. I'm growing Petrovsky, which is a yellow turnip that you pick really quite small and it's utterly, utterly delicious. And I'm also going to be doing Snowball. Now Snowball last year, I direct sowed and we did have really good germination on it actually i kind of scatter sewed it rather than did it in lines but we had very few actually sort of form turnips and we ended up eating it as a kind of chimney wrapper turnip tops florette flowering head rather than as turnips we got a few but not a massive number of them the spinaches that i'm growing are just the sort of spinaches that you can pick for baby leaf really amelia and mediana mediana does grow into quite a robust plant the Amelia tends to be a little kind of baby leaf spinach pickings. But the other one I am going to put in, which is, I will admit, a bit of a stretch, because the seed packets often say May is your last date, but it's a spinach called Americana. And it's a really lovely spinach with big, coarse, hollow stems that look really, really robust, but when you cook them, they're down into a deliciousness. And it is a little bit late for it, but I'm going to give it a go anyway, because even if we end up just picking that as baby leaf, it's still worth putting in. Oh, and also beetroot. So beetroot, you can sow this time of year. So this is probably going to be my last sowing of beetroot for the year. And I'm doing uh, Kyogia, which is the candy striped white and red one. Absolutely delicious. And I'll also do Berkey's Golden, which is an orange one. Now, last month I got in um, Crosby's Egyptian and, and Scarlet Globe. And so they were my June sowing, so they'll be going in as well. So I've kind of got a succession. I'll show you what my ones look like now. These are the ones that I planted out in May. This is how I like to grow my beetroot rather than direct sowing. I like to plant them out straight from module trays. So that's what I'm going to be doing again. And sticking with the root veg theme, carrots can also go in now. This will be my last sowing of carrots, the July ones. I'll do one at the beginning and one at the end. So the varieties I'm going to be doing is Touchon. You've heard me talk about Touchon before. It is my favourite carrot variety. I've never found a more reliable carrot. It is a solid orange excellent choice rounded bottom just a beautiful carrot great flavor i'm going to be doing autumn king now these are ones which are really fantastic for leaving in the ground over winter so rather than having to harvest them all before the frost hits i'll be doing these the end rows so obviously i've got three rows of these carrots and these ones will be the ones on the end and so autumn king are the ones that i will be picking last of the lot of them and that will probably be during the winter now where I am, which is in the south of England in London, a particularly warm patch in London with sandy soil and on a south facing slope of a hill, so it's proper warm. Um, I can get away with Autumn King and Touchon and all those cats. I can probably get away all the way to the end of July. But if you're living somewhere colder, to sow carrots in July, I'd go with one of the ones which is normally considered to be a really early cropper, which generally just means that, that they take a short time between sowing and harvest. So things like early nant. You can really sow them in July and they will be ready by October to pick. So they're not going like into the winter months and taking too long to go. So yeah, go for short season carrots if you're somewhere a bit colder to get some of them in later and you should be, you should be safe with them. Something I've left it too late to grow uh, is leeks. Um, I don't know what happened. I sowed a load early, like at the first point that I could have sowed them and I had absolutely pants germination on them and I just like left them because I got about three leeks out of a whole tray and I never planted them out. I never potted them. I never did anything with them. So they went by the wayside and then I completely forgot to re-sow. So I'm going again with the most fantastic pencil leek variety, which is called Nipper. A little bit like the carrots, they're a very short season leek. They don't have to be in the ground for kind of two thirds of the year for you to get a beautiful crop out of them. So I will be putting Nipper leeks in now although I would say it's too late for like where I am for something like a muscle bra so I'm going for nipper it's going to be a skinny leek year this one now onto brassicas there are loads of brassicas that you can sow in July things like purple sprouting broccoli I'm going to be getting in this week and that will give me a spring harvest 
Cavallinero, another vegetable that you will have heard me go on about. It's my absolute favourite of all of the kale type plants. Um, I got some of these in in April and those plants that are growing away happily now will be my uh, late autumn and winter crops and the ones that I get in now will be my spring and early summer pickings next year. Now is an excellent time to be growing uh, calabrese and cauliflowers, particularly the uh, all year round cauliflower that is much more um, forgiving of when you plant it. But this is a great time to be planting both of those. I'm actually not going to be planting either of them. For me, they take up too much space and you just don't get enough of a yield off them, or at least I don't. <laughs> My cauliflowers are not beautiful. But if you do fancy giving them a go, now is your moment along with, you know, classic calabrese big broccoli or in fact the Romanesco. Now I have had more success with the Romanesco than I have like your bog standard broccoli and it is more exciting to grow uh, but I'm not doing it. But anyway <laughs> now is your time. Same with spring cabbages. If you get them in now they will be ready around April time next year. Another kale that I am actually going to sow is Red Russian. It's been on my list for a while, but I haven't actually got round to growing any myself. I've just been eating other people's. <laughs> but it's a delicious kale. It's a much sweeter, um, it's a much sweeter kind of curly kale. It's not tight curl like the dwarf green one, you know, that's really, really dense and hides the caterpillars in it brilliantly. This has got a much more sort of an oak leaf shape with a red stem, really, really pretty. And I recently found out but this is a variety that makes excellent, you know, like Chinese deep fried seaweed, uh, where it's just, you take the stem out and you really finely chop it, deep fry it, apparently, apparently, seriously. So I know what I'm gonna be doing mostly with my very healthy kale, I'm gonna be uh, deep frying it. Round two of the kohlrabi are gonna go in. I always grow purple kohlrabi, um, I don't know why. These ones were sown around March and were planted out, I can't remember whether it was late April, early May, but sometime around them, and they are really starting to form some proper alien kohlrabis under there, so I'm pretty excited about that. Kohlrabi is a fantastic vegetable, I really, really love them. They make probably the finest coleslaw known to man. If you've never eaten one before, um, you know if you have a really big fat broccoli stem and you slice off all of the outside kind of hard skin and you're left with that very very slender core of incredibly tender really really sweet flesh it's just like a big round version of that they're so good okay so earlier in this year at the end of march we all took a lovely trip to amalfi i don't know if you remember and as part of that, we went to a market and they were selling seeds. So I picked up, firstly, it's a form of chimidi wrapper that they had out there. Uh, I eat a lot of chimidi wrapper. We grow it every year, but I normally grow this one, turnip tops. It's like a flowering, it's like a turnip that never forms the bulb underneath. It just produces these really beautiful, thick, delicious, wonderful, like stems and flower heads. Beautiful, a bit like what I was saying earlier when my snowball turnips didn't come to actually turnipness last year. We kind of ate it like a chimney wrapper, but these are so delicious. And interestingly, like their varieties, particularly the ones you get from Frankie, but from most of the ones I've seen, their variety is, is like the length of time that they take to uh, maturity. So like you get 40 day chimney wrapper, 60 day, 90 day, 120 day chimney wrapper. And I normally do 60 and 120. I just scatter sow them direct sown straight into the ground and just kind of designate a patch of the bed and scatter sow into that. It's worked really well for me in the past. So a couple of times after midsummer, I'll do one in July, I'll do one in August. But what I'm very excited about is this one that I picked up when we were away. What's interesting about this one is, and I could see it for sale in the market actually, like as a vegetable while we are there. It's really, really long and slender and the leaves are really beautiful and slim. In fact, on the back of it, it says, um, with foliage similar to that of the olive tree. I mean, beautiful. And what I'm quite interested about on the back of here is it says the ideal sowing time between July and November. November. So this is not one that I've grown before. It's the same family and a similar vein as the other ones that I have grown, but I'm going to sow this in patches, probably a patch a month, all the way through to November, and we'll see what it does. But exciting, exciting. I had this on a pizza <laughs> when I was out there. It was just, oh, so delicious. I'd really like to be sat by the coast with that pizza and a beer again, I can tell you. 
And also in the same marketplace I picked up this, which is described as a sprouting broccoli. So not a purple sprouting broccoli, just a sprouting broccoli. And that foliage is unlike any um, sprouting broccoli I've ever grown before. So I'm quite excited about this. This is one that I'm going to be sowing July and August and will be harvested over winter, according to the seed packet. <laughs> Never grown it before. Really looking forward to that one. My goodness, this list is endless. <laughs> Beans, okay, beans. You can still get French beans in now. If you're down south like me, I'm talking about England, but if you're in a warm place, you can still get away with climbing French beans planted early July. Uh, if you're anywhere colder, if you're going for late July, I would go for dwarf French beans because they require much less time before they start actually producing any beans for you. And dwarf French beans you can plant all the way into the middle of August. My climbing ones have already gone out. I'm not gonna be doing any more of them. Having said that, Something I have tried over the last couple of years and has worked out really well is that the beans, you know, I had a bit of trouble with the germination on my French beans this year. I say a bit of germ, I say a bit of trouble. I had a lot of trouble, like nothing happened. <laughs> so it was only the second sowing that actually came to anything. But what I did in previous years is that the ones that I sowed in April would be planted out kind of mid-May. And then as I'm planting them out, I direct sowed underneath them at the same time so there's about a month and a half difference between the ones that I was planting out as plants and then the direct sown ones underneath and it gave me a bit of a longer succession but using the same frame so I didn't have to have like an extra arch they were just the older plants would kind of do their thing and die off just as the other ones were growing up through them and kind of producing their beans so that worked really well but I don't know if it's going to work so well this year because I'm obviously so much later but I'll probably still give it a go anyway also, you can probably just about get away with throwing in some runner beans at this time, just because they grow so quick and they fruit really fast. So first couple of weeks of July, you can probably get some runner beans in too. And actually sticking with the legumes, slightly unusual one, peas. Now normally like this would be far too late to be sowing peas. However, there is a variety of pea that is called Douce Provence, and it's an interesting pea <laughs> in the sense that you can actually overwinter it. And what you can also do is sow one about now in July and be picking peas in October. This is what I've been told. And this is what a guy on an allotment a couple over from us has done. And yeah, so Douce Provence, a late pea. I'm going to be sowing some this month and hopefully picking them in October and then in October or maybe late September I will sow another lot and they will get to sort of this sort of size and then over winter and provide me with a really early crop in the spring so a little bit like the kind of the life cycle of a broad bean the overwintered like agrodolti broad beans I want to do that with peas this year but yeah late sowing of Douce Provence in July October peas that would be pretty exciting wouldn't it <laughs> Now I've just got to buy some Douce Provence. When I looked online earlier, they were all sold out, obviously because everybody's trying to sew them about now, but I shall get hold of some. And so that is kind of an overview of stuff which needs to go in now, but there's also things which are just gonna carry on sewing. So lettuces, now still for summer where I am, I would start thinking about sewing winter lettuces in August, the ones that I sew now. I'll be picking early to kind of mid autumn. So I'm gonna be doing just some classics like the Valmain and the Webb's Wonderful and that kind of thing. The ones that I would be growing for winter, I'd think more about like specific winter lettuces. There's a couple of varieties like Arctic King and Winter Density and those kind of ones which I'll be growing later on. But for where I am in South London, now I can still get away with lettuces to be eating in the autumn. There's also radishes. I don't think any what you can sow at this time of year list would be complete without radishes because basically you can sow them at any time of the year. <laughs> uh, outside you can basically sow them from like March all the way through to October. I know they get a bit of a hard time because they're just one of those things, isn't it? That everyone's like, well, plant your radishes now. <laughs> but there's two things about radishes. Firstly, I discovered this variety this year, which is called viola, which is an absolute joy. This makes it look really pink. It's actually much more purple than that. And it's a beautiful, beautiful radish. Really, really nice. And when you've got like a red and a purple in the bowl together, a bit of salt, absolutely delicious. But the other thing about them is that if you let them go to seed, the radish seed pods themselves are so delicious. They're almost more delicious than the radishes. So. I'm gonna be getting some more radishes in. Direct zone, just straight in a drill. I'll be plonking them all over the allotment. 
and along the same lines as the radishes are the things that you can just constantly keep sowing are spring onions so these spring onions are the ones that i sowed a couple of weeks ago maybe a month ago i'm going to be getting them out into the beds today and then i'll be sowing some more straight into this same seed box probably spring onions can be sown direct with no problems whatsoever i just tend to do them this way i think i've got a better grip on the watering because we've got such sandy soil when you're sowing seed that's obviously quite close to the surface of the soil it does tend to dry out really really fast and obviously when seeds germinating it needs a consistent moisture level if they dry out when they've just produced their little shoots and their little root um, they're dead and they're gone so if i got them in a seed tray i've just got a little bit more control over keeping them damp so I will be sowing my spring onions straight back into this tray rather than into beds but if you've got better soil than me just direct sow them straight into the ground they'll be perfect on the herb front I will be sowing more coriander that's going to go into the same box as the carrots but I'm also going to try some just under an environment box that I've got out in the bed so um, you know, I was talking the other day about how the fact that the coriander that I grow in the carrot box under that Mesh cloche is just the best coriander I've ever grown. I'm going to try some just out in the bed uh, under the Mesh and see if I can get it to grow nicely away from the carrots. <laughs> I'm also going to be sowing more basil, uh, red and green basil. I've got a load that I've just planted out into the polytunnel, but I'll get some more of that on the go. I'm going to be getting in some more chervil. I'll direct sow this straight into little pots and then just harvest it straight from that. And I'll also be putting in some dill, uh, the little leaf cutting dill, not the massive tall dill. You can carry on sowing rocket and mizuna and lamb's lettuce. <laughs> Gosh, what else? Texel greens can go in now. Also now we're past the solstice, a little bit like the mustard greens, all of the cresses can go in. So I tend to grow Iranian cress and American cress. Now, the American cress, I don't know if you remember, I cut it down recently. I let it flower and go to seed. It's, it's hanging in this cloth bag. Yeah, so there, can you see that little pod? It's like a bean pod. It's got seed in it and they're drying out really nicely. So I hope a couple more days in the hot sun in the shed, they will uh, be ready to sow again which is exciting and there's one other thing which I haven't mentioned which is silly because now is like prime time for it and that is Florence fennel so you know like proper bulbing fennel rather than a bronze fennel or like leafy fennel the actual one that forms a proper base to it uh, I'm going to be having another go at this year first year I tried to grow this was an absolute raging success and we had more fennel than you can shake a stick at beautiful big fat bulbs of it it was just wonderful I have not grown a single successful fennel since that first time. So we're gonna try again. <laughs> we're gonna try again this year. Now I am sure that I've forgotten some things that you can sow now. You can always get parsley in. All the things that you can kind of sow throughout the year, obviously you can still get all of that stuff in. Um, but that, chaps, is what to do now. <laughs> if any of that takes your fancy, let me know what you're sowing underneath. And actually talking about underneath, I will endeavour to list all of the seed that I've talked about for July sowing in the notes underneath the video. Um, if I've got links to any of where I've bought the seed from, I'll pop them in there. But some things I just sometimes can't find online or they're sold out or something. But I'll list it all underneath anyway. So go and check that out. And now, now I have chatted solidly for what, half an hour in the shed? I'm going to go and actually do some work. I think I'm going to go and plant some chard out, which is pretty exciting. What are you doing girlies? What are you doing girlies? Huh? Think you're the girlie. Okay, after talking for that long, uh, let's actually get down to doing something outside and useful. I am going to be planting out my magnificent peppermint chard, which I'm incredibly excited about, as you can imagine. It's pink, it's chard. Uh, is this will be the first year that I've actually got to grow. I wanted to grow it last year, bought the seed, lost the seed, never got it sown. So this is my first proper year of growing the peppermint chard. And I'm going to put them in this bed. So this is my overwintered broad beans. 
I'd say about half of these plants were actually overwintered, but we had such a cold winter, I lost quite a few of them. These are all Aguadolfi. So for them to die off in the frost is something else. It was really cold. It got to about minus 10 here, which is colder than I've ever known it to be. Anyway, so about half of these are overwintered and the other half I just had to sow again in spring, but they've been fantastic. And I'm just gonna strip the last of the beans off them and uh, clear away these plants because this is where my chart is going to go. This isn't the end of our broad bean harvest for the year though, because at the other end of the bed, you can see the little plants. They are my late spring sown Eleanor Express broad beans. So I'm hoping to get a second wave crop off them. a pretty good last haul of these beans they have served us extremely well this year i'm well impressed and all of this top growth is just going to go straight into the compost and then i'm going to get my chard out my chard is actually rather a lot larger than it would normally be like i said earlier um i was going to possibly be having to use it for another project <laughs> which hasn't actually happened and so now they are ready to go into the beds but it does mean that i've got quite big chard to go out so i'm hoping it's going to fly as soon as it gets its toes in the soil
Good morning. It is about 7.30 on Friday morning and we're off to Hampton Court. Oh, it's exciting times, chaps. Do you remember Hannah off Potty Mouth? Do you remember her, Ginger Girl? Uh, she's also known as Ginger Grows One on Instagram, if you're interested. Well, anyway, she is doing an allotment garden at Hampton Court this year, and I am going off to give her a hand, which is very exciting. We're going to be doing a garden build today. Now, unfortunately, the same rules apply when you're building a garden as to when you're visiting the gardens in that BBC owns all the footage. So I can put a very, very small snippet of what we're up to on here this week. Just a little glimpse of what we're up to and then I will be able to reveal all. And I will be able to reveal all in next week's vlog. show you because of the BBC's crazy policies about filming however <laughs> I will be going back there uh, next week when the gardens are actually open and we can look at everything else and although I have to do that same thing that I always do when we go to the um, RHS shows it's just a bit of a sort of an odd mix between a tiny little bit of filming and then a load of photographs and I will obviously take you around to Hannah's finished product because it looked it really did. Anyway, it is quite early in the morning here and I was all set. I got up quite early, ready to go to the allotment, got a load of stuff to do. Obviously, <laughs> quite a lot of sewing to do, um, but it's absolutely chucking it down outside, which is marvellous because we need it so badly. We really need it. So I'm still having my cup of coffee. <laughs> But yes, sewing, this has been a very, very talking heavy uh, video. So I'm gonna keep this bit very short and sweet. One thing I will say is, I got my Douce Provence peas and George, who's the bloke who grows these peas, uh, wasn't telling poor peas. It actually says on them um, that they can overwinter. Um, so I'm gonna give these, I'm gonna sew them now, obviously as well. I'm gonna do them in two lots. Plenty of peas in there. And uh, then we're also gonna try overwintering them, which would be, exciting anybody grow this one not only so sometimes you know when um, a variety has like a particular thing it's like uh, I don't know club root resistant or bolt resistant sometimes I feel that that characteristic that they've bred into it has kind of been at the sacrifice of the actual flavor or the quality of the vegetable itself however these are an heirloom variety and I quote one of the sweetest available so yeah, I'm really looking forward to growing those. But yeah, I'm sorry about today's incredibly talk heavy video, uh, but there is just so much that you can still sow in July. And it's an odd one because like I was saying, it's like we've got over that huge hump, the spring stuff where there's just, where it's mania and you can basically sow anything. And then, but we're not quite at the point or where I am, we're not quite at the point where we're gonna start sowing stuff, which is going to be for the winter crops or the next spring crops. It's just like this gap big summer harvests like all the tomatoes and everything and courgettes and everything and then and then you've got a bit of a dearth like a gap between the end of the real summer summer stuff and and then going into winter just a bit of a gap so this is the moment to fill that gap <laughs> and there's a lot of options isn't there there's a lot of options when I was going as you can see behind me like I've been going through my seed boxes looking at what I was going to sow and uh, yeah I was really like holy smoke and I had to cut quite a lot of things out like a lot of varieties and stuff that I would quite happily natter on to you about for hours you know I would <laughs> I had to cut a lot of that out but anyway don't forget there's going to be a list underneath of all of the veg that I had listed at the beginning of the video and although this isn't a cheers this is a coffee uh, it was my dad's birthday yesterday so we did a cheers for you yesterday which I will be putting on at the end of this video so I'm just going to say thank you so much to everybody thank you to the Monday Club as always you are the most extraordinary people for supporting this channel um, just cheers to you huge huge thank you to you lot and then just as much so to everybody else who watches week in week out comments does all the thing does the thumbs up does all of that stuff cheers to the lot of you I cannot believe it's July
it was July. We are halfway through the year. Halfway. Six months till Christmas. <laughs> Don't say that, Jesse. Don't say that. from my winter house.